Hello everyone, we are starting a new unit of energy. Energy is a very important topic in science in general and in physics and chemistry in particular, where energy is the source of all movements. We'll start this unit by talking about the term work and what it means. Uh, work is very important because it's how we define energy. We define energy as the ability to do work. In science, work is defined as force times distance. So in order to perform work from scientific perspective, a force needs to be exerted and a movement should take place. Uh, so if you look at the two figures below here, in the first figure the man is pushing against the wall, but the wall is not moving, hence the distance is zero. Therefore the work would be zero. On the second example here on the left, the man is pushing against a cabinet and he was able to move it certain distance, as you see here, and hence he's performing work. So in order to perform work, you need two components, force and distance. So what is the unit of work? Uh, since work is force times distance, hence it will have unit of force times unit of distance. Since the unit of force is Newton and unit of distance is meter, Therefore, the unit of work is Newton times meter, and we call it Joule. So a Joule is basically a Newton force that was able to move an object one meter. To calculate the work done in lifting certain mass, a certain distance, you have to find the force performed, and then multiply it by the distance. Now, in lifting any object, you are doing force against gravity, so you're, the force applied at least equal to the weight of the top. Here we are given the mass to be 1 kilogram. So to find the force, which is the weight, we have to multiply the mass by the acceleration due to gravity, as we learned in lesson number 6. So the mass is 1 kilogram, acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second per second, when you multiply them it will yield 9.8 newtons. This is the force applied in order to lift the object. The work done will be the force times the distance. So 9.8 newton times 1 meter will give you 9.8 newton meter, which is joules. Now let's look at another example. And here, instead of lifting an object, this student is lifting his own weight against gravity. He's doing uh, work against gravity. In order to calculate the work done by a 75 kilogram student, uh, you have to find his weight first because he's doing force against his own weight. He has to exert force at least equal to his weight. To find the weight, we have to multiply the mass by the acceleration to, to gravity. So you multiply 75 kilograms by 9.8, and this will give you around 735 joules. Then you multiply it by the distance in order to find the work. So basically, it's 735 joules times 10, which will give you around. 7,350 joules, as seen in this solution here. In this uh, problem, which is problem number two in discussion exercise number seven, you have this lady pushing against the handle of a lawnmower, and as a result, uh, there is movement in the horizontal direction. In the question here, you are told that the force is applied on the handle can be resolved into two components horizontal component and vertical component. And that's the case with all vector quantities. Uh, force is a vector quantity. You can replace the force vector by two vectors. One of them is horizontal, F sub H, and the other is vertical, V sub V. The question is, which one of those components is causing the work? And the answer is, it will be the force in the direction of motion. Since the lawnmower will be moving in the horizontal direction, hence the horizontal force will be the force performing the work. And to calculate the work, you have to multiply the horizontal force by the distance. Now, somebody might ask, how about the vertical force? Why it's not performing work? And the answer is because there is no movement in the vertical direction. Basically, the vertical force will be countered by an opposite force resulting from the ground pushing against the mower 
in the upward direction, which will cancel the vertical force. Now let's go over the rest of the discussion exercises. Uh, I would like you first to pause this video and, and try to work them yourself. Uh, then you can play the video and see if you get them right. In question number three, what does the work require? As we learned, work is force times distance. Uh, so it will definitely require a net force. It will also require that the object moves, so the object has to change position. It will require motion, hence the answer is all the preceding. Uh, question number four, do all forces do work? And the answer is no, as we saw in the first example of a person pushing against the wall. The wall is not moving, hence his force is not performing work. Uh, question number 5a. A weightlifter holds 900 newton, which is about 200 pounds, over his head. Is he doing any work on the weights? Uh, now, while he's holding the weight without any motion, he's not doing any work because there is no distance, and hence work uh, would be zero. Now, in part b, did he do any work on the weights? And the answer is yes. In order to lift it, he has to apply force, and this force will cause the weight to move upward and hence yes he did work in order to lift it uh, question number six a worker push horizontally on a large crate with a force of 300 newton and the crate is has moved five meter how much work was done in order to find the work in joules you have to multiply the force which is 300 newton by the distance which is five meters and this should yield around uh, 1500 joules as you see in the solution uh, question number eight, how much work is required to lift a four kilogram concrete block a height of two meters? Now notice this question involves lifting and you are given the mass, not the weight. So in order to find the work, first we have to find the force done, which is equal to the weight of the object. And the weight is four kilogram times 9.8 meter per second per second. And this will yield 39.2 newtons so now we get the force needed to lift the object which is equal to the weight of the object hence we can find the work by multiplying the force exerted by the distance which is 2 meters and this will yield 78.4 joules ok question number 7 I missed question number 7 here uh, so let me go back to it while rearranging a dorm room a student does 300 joules of work in moving a desk 2 meters so you are given the work done here not the force the work done and you are given the distance and the question is what's the magnitude of the force now since the work is force times distance hence force will be work divided by distance so to find the force we we'll divide the work which is 300 joules by the distance which is 2 meters and this will yield 150 newton and now we are starting the homework and again uh, please work the questions yourself first and then continue watching this video okay assume you already solved the questions so let me go over the answers here what is the SI unit of work? Uh, the SI unit of work is joule as we learned uh, what is the SI unit of energy? energy and work share the same unit which is joule since energy is the ability to do work and we'll learn later also that the work is the mean by which energy change from one form to another question number three work is defined as force times any distance distance is direction of motion of a force distance perpendicular to the force or time as we learn the force that is doing the work is the force that is causing the distance we saw that in the example over the mower the vertical force applied on the mower machine does not do any work only the horizontal force will do the work uh, so it has to be distance in the direction of the force question number four work requires what it requires net force motion displacement so all of these question number five if you lift 10 newton weight vertically 10 meter above the ground you are and yes as you would guess it's work against gravity when you lift anything in the vertical direction you are doing work against gravity and to find the work here you just multiply the force by the distance question number six show that in terms of the fundamental SI units the units of work 
are kilogram meter square over second square. Now remember, work is force times distance, and the unit of force, which is Newton, represent kilogram meter over second square, because the unit of force will be unit of mass times unit of acceleration. And since work is force times distance, so it will be the unit of force, delete, which is kilogram meter over second square times meter, which will give you kilogram meter square over second square. As you see here in the solution, we replace Newton by kilogram meter over second square, and it's multiplied by meter. This is the unit of distance, and this will yield kilogram meter square over second square. In question number seven, how much work is required to lift four kilogram concrete block to a height of two meters? Uh, here you are given the mass, not the weight. So in order to find the work, we have to find the weight first. Recall that any lifting problem require force equal to the weight of that object that we are lifting. So first we find the weight of the 4 kilogram and in order to do that we multiply 4 kilogram by 9.8 meter per second per second that's the acceleration due to gravity and this will yield 39.2 newtons then we can apply the equation of the work force times distance uh, which will yield 78.4 joules on the last problem, uh, recall that the force that is in the direction of the motion is producing the work. Uh, for a lawn mower, not the whole 200 Newton is doing the work, only portion of it, uh, which is the horizontal component of the 200 Newton, will be doing the work. So to find the work done, we have to find the horizontal component of the 200 Newton and multiply it by the distance, which is 6 meters, and this will yield the work. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you find it educational.